I was living the life. I was in the Caribbean, lying on the beach. The ocean was bright blue. I was eating at the best buffets. Okay now, Phil. Okay now. Sorry. <laughs> getting massages by the poolside, and hanging out with my newfound friends. I was even hired as one of the water aerobics instructors. Yes, and then I was bone fishing the flats with Steve and expert guides Alberto and Nacho. I couldn't have asked for anything more. Hey Nacho, do you ever see any alligators out in these? In the north side in the Cozumel? No, here, okay. no. Okay. In south of the island. Just, just in down the, the way? Side of the island, yes. Wow. Okay, well, I'm glad we're on this side here, then. Stingray, uh, alligator, nothing. Okay, good. That's all good for me. Straight ahead, 60 feet. It's not far enough. Go more, more to the left. More to the left, okay. Ooh, shoot. Okay, dang it. Where am I? Right in the chest. Yeah. That wasn't good. Okay, let me get this fly out. Whoops, sorry. God. You're not filming that, are you? Now, now, now. Good, right Wait. Okay. Now. This side. I can turn the thing. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Three. Two, five, Three. Got it. Oh, yeah. Got it. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Please stop. Okay, you should read. Okay. Look, it's big school. Yeah, big school. Big school, big fish. Awesome guide, Nacho. Very cool. Good cast. Yeah, and he said a good cast too. That's, that's good. Hopefully it won't go for that. Up, up, up. Woo! I'm having a ball. This is awesome. Up, up. <laughs> These are powerful. Man. They are powerful. You get tired. Yeah, Nacho saw a big school. Said it was right in front of me. I didn't believe him because I couldn't see a thing. And there they were. Awesome. Jeez. I thought I had it. I thought I had it in. Still no worries, Nacho? Because I'm worried. Oh, golly, my forearms are cramping. I'm trying to figure out how to switch hands, but I can't. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice release. That's yeah. okay. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, no. That's good. That's good. I tell you, we fought that thing. It's beautiful. And since it's got away, it was a 15 pound fish. So it's perfect. <laughs> Thank you filming. very much. <laughs> no, that was fun, man. That was great. Very cool. Okay, this was truly paradise. Hey you guys, check it out. It's like Laden's dreaming of the Caribbean again, catching bonefish. <laughs> it's hopeless. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here obviously in the winter time and I am fishing with GL Britton from Double Spay Outfitters. And we're doing a little ice fishing today and we have some buddies in the background. We have Kip right there, Sawyer, and Steve. 
and uh, we're looking for a great day of fishing. What do you think, GL? Yeah, this is going to be fun. It's uh, not our typical fly fishing adventure, but yeah. uh, there's a lot of fly fishing guides that uh, got a choice this weekend of uh, dodging iceberg steelhead and they're coming ice fishing, <laughs> and uh, a lot of us are choosing to ice fish. And it's the one time of year where we keep a lot of fish. You're actually doing these panfish lakes a favor to keep fish out of them biologically. Uh -huh. So, uh, and it's the best fishing of the year in terms of numbers and the best eating fish of the year so it, it's perfect and you hit a day like today uh, where we're gonna have sunshine well I know where I want to be I'll be in here so if you catch a fish just give me a yell <laughs> okay I'll be uh, in this ice house okay we could do <laughs> we could do that all right <laughs> ladies and gentlemen that's Kip Sims with the salmon rod out here ice fishing <laughs> is that a salmon rod or a sturgeon rod <laughs> okay <laughs> we're getting a strike here we go hook set got him this feels like it might be a keeper. Yeah, I think this one will go in the bucket. Oh, yes, he will. Nice perch. Oh, that's a beauty. Most of the bigger ones that you get out of any, any given lake, the upper 20% uh, of the size population that you get, they're almost all going to be females that are going to be spawning here within another month or so. Now, what were we saying about a salmon rod? <laughs> <laughs> <We're just fine. laughs> there you go. It's proved wrong. Didn't put up much of a fight. Did <laughs> Part of the deal, especially if you're in shallow water, not so much the... 25, 30 feet that we're in here is to keep the ice house uh, quiet. When you get a school under you, you don't want things rattling, bouncing on hard plastic that uh, those vibrations carry right down through the ice. So I lay foam and carpeting down in the bottom of the ice house. Where, so what you want to do in those situations, if you aren't fishing out of an ice house like we have here, is you want to fish uh, off of a tarp or a, a large blanket or something like that that gives you a place to sit and hide your body movements. So if that school moves in, they may move in because of the darkness afforded by that tarp in the shallow water. Oh, yeah. getting a... Fish on! Fish Oh! Does not feel like a whopper, but it is a perchoid. Oh, hey! <laughs> now, for all you people that think this is no fun at all, there is nothing like this. There is absolutely no finer eating on this planet than these little guys here. Their meat is as good now as it'll be any time of the year and it's snow white and I know things deep fried are not necessarily the best for you but deep fried perch is as good as it gets. It's you know like I said gently so you don't bash on the edge of the hole. Put the auger down just slide it down all the way. Uh -huh. Now put your arm. Put your Somehow growing up I must have missed the class in ice augering. He thinks he's digging still. Okay. He thinks he's digging still. Oh, you got he <laughs> Man, he's got the magic touch. <laughs> do this now. And then just slide it down and then just pull it straight up quick. Whoop, and it'll pull the water end. Just that one has a little bit. And it'll get most of that loose ice out of there. GL hooks into another perch. There we go. Got him. Didn't know if I had him at first. It's not going to bend very much here. <laughs> I think this is another little guy. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. This this one doesn't <laughs> this one doesn't count. They yeah. need to be longer than the strike indicator. <laughs> yeah. And again, be gentle with these guys. They're gonna be next year or the year after's big one. So yeah. stick them back in the hole. Swim they'll, off. they'll find their way down. Come on now. They're kind of just come on, just a little try to let go. A little quiver of it. I mean, literally trying to do just quarter inch quivers. Okay, I'll work the finger. Now, when you're you're jigging that, I, I would go about once every 15 to 30 seconds where you do a, a two foot okay. lift. And that's what I call the the hail call. It's like the highball for mallards. Whoa! <laughs> 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 that was good. Woohoo!
And that's that's designed to call the school in from maximum <laughs> distance. And uh, but then after you do that, I just do real tiny quivers, just trying to barely make that jig flutter and just act a tiny bit alive. There you go. You're being watched by the eagle. We didn't get the perch. One of the things you can do that'll help your own fishing is to make your own ice jigs. This is one box of my uh, ice jigs. These are designed to fish different depths of water. The, the small ones on this side are designed if we're fishing under five feet of water. Then they get heavier as you come this way. And the heavier ones have uh, a little bigger tungsten bead on the front of them and they're held on by thread. It's 10 times stronger than the hook available in commercial ice fishing jigs to where I could fish that hook. Um, that very well may have been on for multiple seasons on this ice rod. Oh, there we go. Oh, good job. Nice. <laughs> hey, 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 fish on. <laughs> Quite literally right on the bottom. I'm dropping it down, let it hit, and lift it two or three inches, and that's where they are. Any higher than that, they're just not touching it so far. I know that I'm a fly fishing guide, and this seems like the the antithesis of fly fishing, but uh, it really is a, a great way to spend the winter months, and it is a lot of fun. And literally for the price of a guide day, you'd get a nice house and a sled and uh, basically be set up completely to do this. And, it, and it, almost every winter we have good ice in North Idaho and Eastern Washington. Here he comes. They're just awesome colored fish. They're, they're so cool. And they don't look like a predator, but you wouldn't want to be an inch long minnow swimming around with this <laughs> thing by you. You go down the hatch in a hurry. Devil's Bay Outfitters has also taken us to the famous Crab Creek in Washington where we fish for a beautiful rainbow. And also into the wilds of North Idaho for native West Slope cutthroat. GL has also invited us down to his Snake River Steelhead Camp where he got us into some beautiful steelhead. GL, even though we're ice fishing here, I mean, inside these, these ice houses, I mean, it's just beautiful, comfortable temperature. Oh yeah, with this small heater going, even without it, just with the sunlight in this uh, against the outside, which is black fabric, uh, they heat up in a, in a hurry, and they're a really comfortable place to fish out of. Got it. This should be a keeper. Coming up from 30 feet below. Yeah. Oh yeah. Nice. Oh yeah. Super Bowl Sunday. Some crazy guy calls us, says, get up, let's get up at uh, 5.30, drive two hours across North Idaho, stand on some frozen lake <laughs> all morning instead of getting ready for the Super Bowl. <laughs> but hey, I cannot complain. It's a beautiful day, lots and lots of fish. Up on Kokolala Lake, just outside of Sandpoint. You want to tell everyone how tough I am running around barefoot in shorts? <laughs> I did not know a grown man could squeal so loud and scream <laughs> in such a high voice. Uh, <laughs> not what I asked for. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> I like the part best when your socks were frozen to the ice. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty impressive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We're trying to decide if he's tough or crazy. Probably a little bit of both. <laughs> yep. Here it comes. It feels like a pretty decent one. Oh, yeah. All right. That's a beauty. Beauty, eh? Beauty, eh? You hoser. Nice. What's the restroom situation out here? I went to film Kep. 
<laughs> I gotta get a picture of that. Yep. <laughs> Back inside the ice house, GL's bobber was yanked down. Got it. Got him. And GL pulled the fish toward the surface. Oh yeah. There's a perch. Very cool. There he is. There he is, Langamon. Oh. Oh, he's easy 17 incher. Woo! Steve has one too. Oh. Oh, he's a pudge. That was one little mealworm on there, is all. Tip of the Week is brought to you by Northwest Outfitters, located at the village at Riverstone in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. A great way to fish these big dry flies is make sure they're really well greased up, foam helps, and then with little micro mends of your fly line, I can make that bug twitch really nicely. Just making that head move, rubber legs kick, I want some rings to show and then I'll let the rings settle before I do my twitch again. Another good way to make that fly have movement is if every once in a while I just lift my rod tip six inches to a foot, I'll make that fly skate just like a caddis would or a big stone fly that's got a crippled wing or something skittering across the, the surface of the water can draw the fish's attention when they might not normally see a dead drifted fly. A couple rings come off from that bug, let them settle and then give it another twitch. Your fly will skate a little bit, let it sit, pick it up, make it skate. It's just skittering across the surface, which can attract the attention of a trout that might not normally see it. I like to really just quiver the jig, almost like it's somebody who has a little bit of a shake to their hand. You want just a little tiny quiver, and that's the action that frequently triggers their bite. Strike. Gah. Sometimes with the little fish, they don't get the whole hook into their mouth. Here, strike again. What's that again? There we go. Ooh, this feels like a definite keeper. Yep. Nice. And that just goes to show I missed it two or three times was thinking small fish and uh, turns out to be one of the nicer ones. Well, what do you think? I haven't had any bumps for about a half an hour or so. Should we okay. pack it up and head them out? Sounds good. All righty. Well, not a bad, not a bad day, I got to say. Okay, so, uh, yeah, besides, I'm getting a little chilly. <laughs> Are you really? Actually, that's kind of getting pretty hot. Kicking back in. I got all unzipped here and whoo. Okay. This is your Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> that, that's good footage right there. Yep. <laughs> well, hey, GL, that was an awesome day. Oh, I so, appreciate it. Yeah, nice appreciate meeting it. you, Dan. That was yep. a great time. You bet. That was awesome. I see you, you betcha, Steve. Thank you. Yep, yeah, you're welcome. Well, shall we skate out of here, gentlemen? Yeah, be, be careful. Skate is the right word. <laughs> Several fish landed, and we still made it back for the Super Bowl. It was a good day. Be sure to join us next time for more Fishing with Lad. Because we're having fun catching fish. <laughs>